This story is based on official reports and eyewitness accounts. And this is the story of Inex Adria Flight 1308. On December 1, 1981, during the early hours of the morning, in the Slovenian capital of Ljubljana, 173 passengers and 7 crew members boarded Inex Adria Airways Flight 1308, with their destination being Corsica, a French island located in the Mediterranean Sea approximately an hour and a half away. Flight 1308 was not a normal flight, and its unusual circumstances would come together in a very unfortunate way. A travel agency had arranged a flight on this day to commemorate a Yugoslav national holiday. The flight was intended to transport 130 passengers to the picturesque city of Ajaccio in Corsica, where they would disembark and take a city tour. Later that same evening, the passengers were scheduled to reboard the plane and return to Slovenia. The travel agency's original choice of aircraft, a DC-9, was unable to accommodate all the passengers, so Inex Adria Airways used one of their brand new McDonnell Douglas MD-82s instead. This aircraft, which had just entered service the previous year, had more powerful engines, advanced cockpit technology, and better fuel efficiency than the DC-9. As a result, there was plenty of extra space on board, which the airline filled with their own employees, as well as their families, and those associated with the travel agency, totaling 43 three additional passengers. The total number of individuals on board the aircraft was 173 passengers and seven crew members. The plane, registered as Yankee Uniform Alpha November Alpha in Yugoslavia, was a recently manufactured McDonnell Douglas MD-82 that had only been in service for six months and had flown for a total of 683 hours. Its latest maintenance test had taken place four days prior to the flight. The pilot in command was Ivan Kunavik, a 55-year-old captain with over 12,000 hours of flying experience. Kunavik had previously flown for the Yugoslav Air Force for many years before joining Inex Adria Airways in 1970. Although he had completed his training on the new MD-82 aircraft type in the United States earlier that summer, he had only logged 188 hours on it before the flight. The first officer on the flight was Frank Turglav, a 40-year-old with over 4,000 hours of flying experience. He had slightly more experience flying the MD-80 aircraft than the captain, having logged 288 hours on the type. Turglav had even brought his young son along for the flight to show him the new aircraft and enjoy a visit to Ayacho. Both pilots, Captain Ivan Kunavik and First Officer Frank Turglav, were visiting Ayacho for the first time as the flight was not a part of the airline's regular schedule. The flight, carrying 180 people, took off from Brunic Airport at 6.40, headed for Ayacho, the capital city of Corsica. After receiving clearance to climb to their cruising altitude of 33,000 feet, the crew charted their course over the Adriatic Sea. Around 7.10 a.m., the pilots received the weather report for their destination, Ayacho, which indicated cloudy sky and calm winds. Shortly after, the aircraft entered the control zone of Rome and received clearance to begin its descent to 27,000 feet. The controller also informed the pilots that the flight would later be cleared to descend to 19,000 feet. As they descended to 19,000 feet, the co-pilot's son entered the flight deck and was permitted to occupy the observer's seat. After reaching the Ayacho VOR, they would initiate a holding pattern while descending. Once they descended to an appropriate altitude, they would exit the holding pattern by flying away from the Ayacho VOR on a southwestern heading of approximately 247 degrees. Then, they would execute a descending turn of 320 degrees to align with runway 03 at Ayacho. Depending on the circumstances, they would either proceed with an ILS approach to runway 03 or, if runway 21 was active in the opposite direction, they would opt for that. Since they were flying to that destination for the first time, it was necessary for them to thoroughly review the approach. Here's the precise chart they were using. To reach Ayacho, they had to initially navigate towards the Ayacho VOR, a radio beacon situated to the south of the airport. Due to the absence of radar at Ayacho Airport, air traffic control had limited ability to assist with the approach. Controllers depended on position reports provided by pilots to track their location. The crew had to brief the approach while descending, and their briefing was in interrupted twice by the first officer's son, who alerted them to mountains visible through the windows. Unfortunately, due to these interruptions, the pilots missed a crucial piece of information during the approach briefing. Let's take a short break. We've put a lot of effort into this video, and if you find it useful and informative, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support helps us bring you more great content. Thanks for watching. 
The Ayacho Approach Controller grants clearance to Flight 1308 to maintain an altitude of 11,000 feet and informs the crew that they will be landing on runway 21. The approach to Ayacho necessitates the flight to initially navigate towards the Ayacho VOR, a radio beacon situated south of the airport. The flight is then instructed to enter a holding pattern around the VOR while descending. Once they reach a suitable altitude to commence the approach, they are permitted to depart the holding pattern on a heading of 247 degrees. The flight must execute a 320 degree turn to align with the runway. At 7.50, the flight crew contacts the controller and states, Just now Ayacho VOR, level is 110 and holding pattern. The controller responds by saying, Report leaving Alpha Juliet Oscar on radial 247 for final approach. The captain replies, Okay sir, we're just over Ayacho VOR and we're requesting further descent. This exchange marks the beginning of a series of misunderstandings between the Ayacho approach controller and the flight crew. It seems that the controller mistakenly assumes that the pilots will bypass the holding pattern and proceed directly to a radial 247 approach from the Ayacho VOR, which is a common practice followed by many pilots for the same approach. However, the captain, who is unfamiliar with flying to Ayacho, correctly enters the designated holding pattern over the Ayacho VOR. When entering the holding pattern, the aircraft is traveling at a speed of approximately 230 to 250 knots instead of the intended 150 knots knots. This significantly increases the size of the holding pattern radius. Due to the mistaken belief that the aircraft is flying on radial 247 outbound from the Ayacho VOR, the approach controller clears flight 1308 to descend to 3000 feet. However, the critical issue arises because flight 1308 is actually in the Ayacho VOR holding pattern, which has a minimum holding altitude of 8600 feet. The purpose of this altitude is to ensure that aircraft remain above Mount San Pietro, which stands at 4,500 feet. Allowing the flight to descend to 3,000 feet is a serious misunderstanding. In this situation, the crew fails to grasp two crucial pieces of information. Firstly, they do not comprehend that the controller cleared them to descend on Ayacho VOR radial 247, not while in the holding pattern. Additionally, the crew should ignore the controller's instruction to descend to 3,000 feet because the minimum altitude for their holding pattern is 8,600 feet. They must not go below this minimum altitude in the area, the captain says. Okay, got it. We're descending from 11,000 feet to 3,000 feet, following radial 247 from 110. Unfortunately, using radial 247 reinforces the controller's belief that they will skip the holding pattern and go straight for the approach. Just 20 seconds later, the captain tells the controller, we're currently in the holding pattern over Ayacho. We'll let you know when we're inbound on radial 247. Regrettably, the controller doesn't realize that the aircraft is in the holding pattern over the Ayacho VOR, not on radial 247 as they thought, and replies with a simple, Roger. Two minutes later, the captain radios, We're rolling inbound, out of 6,000. Following the captain's transmission, the controller responds with, Roger 1308, report turning inbound. However, the captain's intention is for the plane to turn left within the holding pattern towards the Ayacho VOR. Unfortunately, the controller misinterprets it as the plane turning towards Ayacho Airport over the sea. Just 10 seconds later, the captain announces, Turning inbound to Ayacho because at the moment we're in cloud. Despite this, the controller still believes the plane is turning inbound to Ayacho Airport and replies, Roger 1308, report Charlie Tango on final. This becomes the last opportunity for the pilots to prevent the impending disaster. Within seconds, the cockpit is filled with the sound of the ground proximity warning alarm, indicating an imminent collision with the ground. The pilots are caught off guard by the combination of the controller's voice and the cockpit warnings, leading to confusion. Seconds later, the captain urgently shouts, Power! Power! As the first officer pushes the throttles to their maximum and pulls back on the control column. However, it proves to be too late. While banking at a 30-degree angle, the aircraft's left wing collides with the mountainside, resulting in the shearing of its outermost 8 meters. Upon impact, 
All 180 people on board tragically lost their lives instantaneously. As the aircraft descended in its final dive, one of the pilots accidentally activated the radio, leading the controller to hear an unusual whistling sound over the communication channel. Concerned about the situation, the controller made repeated attempts to establish contact with the flight, realizing that something was seriously wrong. Prompted by the alarming discovery, search and rescue teams were immediately mobilized to search the sea along the airport's approach path. It took five hours before two helicopter crews spotted the scattered wreckage on the side of San Pietro Mountain. The devastating state of the aircraft, shattered into countless pieces, left no doubt that there were no survivors. France's Transportation Safety Board promptly dispatched investigators to the crash site, who immediately began their examination. Two years later, in their final report, the board identified the main cause of the accident as the crew's decision to descend below the minimum safe altitude. Contributing factors included the misunderstanding between the controller and the pilots. As a result, the Transportation Safety Board issued several recommendations aimed at preventing similar accidents in the future. These recommendations encompass the establishment of a standardized vocabulary for pilots and controllers, ensuring that ambiguous or unusual phrasing would never lead to misunderstandings. For Ayacho Airport, the Safety Board recommended installing radar and moving the holding pattern over the sea. These suggestions were implemented successfully. A crucial improvement worldwide is the standardized radio language used by pilots and controllers. Now, no matter where you fly, pilots and controllers use the same terms in a similar way, with only slight differences based on location. This consistency improves communication and enhances aviation safety globally. Even today, the crash of Flight 1308 remains the second most severe aviation disaster on French territory and the most devastating accident involving an MD-80 aircraft worldwide. In memory of the 180 people who lost their lives in the Inex Adria Flight 1308 tragedy.